welcome to virtual workshop on how to promote Indonesian products through social media organized by the Consulate General of the Republic of Indonesia in Houston. This is the first time that the Consulate doing this kind of event amid the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic, all states, even countries, take stay home measures and do social distance, but economic diplomacy should go on. There is an increasing number of e-commerce and social media. We noted that 52% of people now using social media because of the measures of social distance and also stay home measures. The Consul General of Republic of Indonesia would like to take this opportunity, of course, to empower Indonesians, especially in the United States, to promote their products through social media and digital marketing. Bapa Ibu, ladies and gentlemen, we have 100 participants join in uh, this workshop and we have three speakers who will present to you how to promote Indonesian products through social media. The first speaker that I'm going to introduce is Dr. Suyang Sani Zhang. Can you greet everyone? Dr. Sani, please. Yes. Hi, hello. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hi, Dr. Thank Sani. You. Thank you also, yes. Dr. Sani is an academic and entrepreneur specializing in social network, digital marketing, cross-culture collaboration, global innovation and business development. I will uh, introduce uh, her detail later when he, she will start her presentation. The se second speaker is Miss Abigail Rose. Can you say to the uh, participants, please? Hi, Abigail, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Thank Hi, you Abigail. very much. Hello. And then the third speaker is Mr. Tristan Tarpley. Can you Thank greet you. every participant, please, Tristan? Hello, everybody. Hi. Thanks for being here today. Hi, Tristan. Hello. All right. Yes. So uh, before we start, I'm going to explain to you how we're going to do the, uh, the, this kind of workshop. The first one, each speaker will talk about 15 minutes. I'm going to call it as the first segment. And then the second speakers will also uh, present for 15 minutes. And the third speaker also will be given 15 minutes. So the last segments will be question and answer. And we will give the chance for participants by first come, first serves. Don't forget, we also have a quiz with all the gifts. So please uh, pay attention to the presentation of the speakers. Without further ado, don't forget also that uh, this uh, presentation or, or this workshop will be uh, downloaded uh, through YouTube later on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Bapak Ibu sekalian. Uh, first of all, I'm going to invite Dr. Su Yang Zhang. She will talk about the importance of digital strategies and data analytics in marketing strategies and how to address COVID-19 challenge. She is the associate professor in the Department of Management and Marketing at the Cameron School of Business, University of St. Thomas. She's also the founder and president of Z-Lab, Global Innovation Partners, enabling innovative businesses an organization to scale up locally and internationally through collective intelligence and social capital. She's very experienced, 20 years in consumer and organizational behavior, and her thesis and also her dissertation related to e-commerce and also social networks. So I'm going to invite Dr. Suyang Zhang, please. All right. Thank you, Dr. Nana. I'm going to share my screen.
Okay. Does everybody see my picture with uh, Dr. Nana? Yes. Yes. Okay, so the sharing is working, right? So it's my great honor to be here and um, lucky to get to know Dr. Nana and the entire crew at the consulate. And I always wanted to uh you know contribute and help the indonesian community so i'm really glad to have this opportunity uh, to share my experience in digital marketing and international marketing so a little bit of myself as dr nana mentioned i started doing uh e-commerce in the year of 2000 so it's been 20 years and uh and then i started teaching and doing research on international marketing since 2009 so that's also over 10 years um, and, you know, of course, over these years, we've faced a lot of challenges with uh, COVID-19 being the la latest challenge. So uh, with that, I'd like to almost like zoom out. I understand that today's topic is social media, but then I really would like to start with international marketing and also uh, digital marketing uh, strategies so that we see ourselves in the big picture and then zoom in uh, with, you know, uh, our other speakers so that we can get both perspectives, you know, both the big picture and the detail oriented. So today my topic is maximizing digital marketing OI by integrating analytics, strategy and implementation. So what do we mean by this? ROI, as we all know, is return on investment. So we have to have the end goal uh, in mind when we are implementing. Although the reality is a lot of us started by implementation. You know, we're posting on social media and then we realize, oops, who's our target market? Do we have a strategy? And then do we know the numbers? Do we know the data and analytics about our target market? So usually this is done in reverse order, which is why I wanted to bring it together. And then um, the other, the other, you know, thing I, I've been observing is when we are, you know, uh, when we are um, executing our marketing efforts, we usually tend to, you know, uh, do more. Our fingers and they're all segmented. You know, the there's the writers, there's the, you know, there's. Uh, for generating content, there's the photographer, videographer, there's the programmer who's doing the website, and then the researcher who's collecting data, but then they're really not integrated, and as a, as a result, your ROI is discounted. So how can we maximize our return on investment, especially now, you know, with the COVID-19 challenge, we have limited cash flow, and we have to really, really capture you know, uh, all the market possible. So before I get uh, get to that, I wanted to revisit the definition of marketing because, you know, um, it's almost like we are in the day-to-day -day operation. We don't really think about what is marketing. And when we do, I think we usually assume it is, uh, you know, either sales or social media or advertising or public relations, right? So, uh, you know, in the right-hand corner, as you see, when we think about marketing, usually we assume that these are the elements of marketing, right? So I wanted to, you know, I, like I mentioned, zoom out to remind everybody, yes, that is marketing, but it's only the promotion element of marketing, okay? Um, you also need to consider in the overall strategy, what is your pricing? You know, for example, COVID-19 right, right now, do you still want to offer your full menu or do you want to make adjustment about your pricing strategy, uh, about your pr uh, product strategy, and then also your distribution strategy? So it's also like a good reminder of uh, the, the four Ps that we actually need to mix them together. So I want to remind everybody, please, in addition to, you know, considering social media, think about your core product, the, the distribution, you know, so-called place, and your pricing strategy and make adjustment based on the external environment. So, um, and you may think, okay, that's marketing. Wait a minute, that's not just marketing. The core, the core element of marketing is target market. You have to think about who are you serving. And this is extremely important for international marketers. Like if you come from a different culture, you really need to think about you know, your, the local uh, target market you're serving right now and their characteristics. Their, there's economic differences, cultural differences, 
uh, technological differences and think about how you segment and target and differentiate from your competitors. So uh, this is really, you know, overall in the big picture, the external market environment I just mentioned, you know, the political legal forces, uh, there's a lot of regulation that's been changing, you know, every day. Um, and then there's also uh, technological, there's social cultural, very big factor, you know, especially when things are in transition, when we're dealing with a crisis, and of course, economic factors, so thinking about who are the ones you might need to help and who are the ones who you you make your revenue out of and then in the meanwhile keep an eye on your competitors uh, and of course your customers and understanding your own uh swat which is strength weakness uh, opportunity and threats so that's like a quick overview of marketing strategy i just wanted to under you know to remind everybody hey when you are working on your social media content uh it's really not just about you know, making pretty pictures and, um, you know, attractive videos. It's really who you're serving, who do you have as your target market and what is the external environment? Who do you, who, who do they, uh, what kind of content do they respond most effective uh, on? So I will also share some of the case studies that we've done in the past. And uh, Dr. Nana, when I'm running out of time, could you give me an indicator? Thank you. Because <laughs> I'm in full screen mode, so I'm not seeing my clock right now. Thanks. All right. So that's really, you know, the overall marketing um, uh, strategy. So today I'd like to uh, give you the overview of international marketing and cultural adaptation. Uh, you might be really successful in your home country, and we've worked with uh, businesses from different cultures, you know, you, you can't really simply uh, practice the same thing when you are serving a different market. So I, I wonder how many of you guys are, uh, you know, basically how long have you been doing business in the United States? Are you first generation or second generation Indonesian here? I think, you know, uh, some, you know for somebody like myself, um, I'm originally, uh, from China, so Eastern uh, culture is very humble. Like usually, we're not very extroverted in terms of promoting our products. We believe that as long as our products are solid, we, we shouldn't have any problem. But the thing is, everybody is consuming overwhelming amount of information. If you don't stand out, you're gonna be overwhelmed by your competitors. So that's number one, I'd like to focus on uh, the international marketing and the cultural adaptation. Number two, I also would like to uh, look at the uh, analytics and strategy. How do they work together for digital and social media marketing? And then of course, last but not least, uh, I'd like to talk about some of the challenges we're facing. Uh, but I believe the bigger the challenge, the bigger the opportunity. I honestly think COVID-19 um, as sad as it is, it, it, you know, for innovative companies that's embracing uh, technology, uh, for example, uh, Dr. Nana, you know, thanks to Indonesian consulate right now, we're, we're hosting this workshop to, to, uh, to utilize the digital tools like social media and others. Uh, so how can you get the most uh, out of this kind of situation and also have the social responsibility to give back to the community? So those are, you know, the major topics. Now, uh, coming back to the marketing strategy model, here's a quick uh, introduction of what I do with my consulting company. It is a full service global innovation consultancy. Uh, you know, we were a marketing consultancy for three years and then rebranded as an innovation consultancy because we wanted to emphasize the usage of technology. But the purpose is to optimize return on investment for local and international growth. So our process is usually, you know, three steps. As I mentioned, we don't want to use fragmented kind of approach. Instead, we use our research and analytics to guide the strategic planning, which uh, then coordinate with all the implementation efforts, you know, for social media, for example, then that would include the graphic and the video animation, of course, you know, uh, all the content generation. So, but that's all driven by data-oriented marketing strategy. And I'll give you an example of how we were able to reduce the customer acquisition cost from $200 to five bucks. Dr. Okay. Sani, you have five more minutes, please. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, this is our, our step. This is how we, how we do things. And then, you know, I'm gonna skip this because I really would like to get to the case study in terms of how we did it. 
Um, so Faramore is a digital, uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a genetic dating app. I don't know how many of you guys have uh, heard of it, but essentially, uh, you know, they have the, they, they are facing the challenge of having, you know, more users download their app. Uh, so a little background, uh, they essentially, the founders are uh, PhDs from Rice University and they had the literature of, uh, you know, basically the way people are attracted to each other is determined by 11 pair of genes. So combining the genetic data with social media data, uh, they came up with this app that supposedly help you find the ideal mate, um, you know, ideal better half. So essentially when they met us, their customer acquisition cost, as you see, is about $200 because they're using a lot of uh, event marketing, which is expensive. But then we uh, you know, redirected their investment solely to social media because that's where they get the most engagement based on the data. Uh, you know, so essentially we run a campaign of 30 days for a thousand downloads. And we were also you know, facing a lot of challenges because Facebook blocked the ads. I think Tristan probably would address that later, you know, in the social media ad uh, section. But essentially, you might be running challenges, but the key for the success of this case study is that when we're running social media campaigns, we're monitoring the data analytics, we're optimizing where you spend each dollar for your advertisement, and eventually we were able to accomplish a 1,000 downloads in 30 days and reduce the customer acquisition cost to five bucks. So that's a quick case study. And then we have some testimonials where currently we just finished the digital transformation for Station Houston. And we've done uh, the entire uh, strategy for the George H.W. Bush Foundation for US-China relations. So I'm just gonna flip through these. And of course, you know, a lot of international cases. And then I'll leave it uh, here. I hope I'm not taking too much time. But my key, my key takeaway message uh, for you all is, uh, Think about the integrated approach and think about marketing in the bigger picture and not get lost into the day-to-day -day posting because everything, every message should serve a purpose. Uh, be mindful of who's your target market, what's, your, what's their primary needs, and use data analytics to guide you. So every uh, second, every minute you're spending and every dollar, every cent you're spending is serving the target market and get the best return on investment. So um, at the end, I also would like to address some of the COVID-19 challenges. I know that uh, from talking with Dr. Nana that a lot of participants are in the restaurant industry. So there are some successful cases. I'll also share with Dr. Nana later on uh, to go with the newsletter so that you can look at su successful cases in the restaurant industry. But think about how can you actually you know, maintain your operation with the resources you have? Think about the product strategy. Think about you know, what you wanna offer. Think about the pricing strategy. How do you wanna distribute? How do you also build the confidence and the trust that everything they're consuming is virus free? So those are all critical. Last but not least, I also wanna emphasize on social responsibility because this is the time when you're bonding with your customers, building relationships, uh, you know, how you may be able to serve your target market while uh, you know, giving back to the community also helps you to send out. Dr. Nana, um, am I doing okay? Yeah, well, thank you very much, Dr. Sunny Zhang for your presentation. Well, ladies and gentlemen,